overview of uh, ST's programs uh, starts with the, uh, the Bull program itself. So um, our production facilities encompass uh, main production facilities in Navasota, Texas, mm -hmm. in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and Mahoopany, Pennsylvania. Uh, two of those three facilities are EU facilities, so that semen can be moved all around the world. Um, the facility here in Navasota, Texas, uh, this uh, obviously can fit the domestic marketplace in the U.S. and will collect for South America, uh, Latin America, Australia, um, anything non-EU we can, we can work that production in as well. Uh, size and scope, we can generally have a production capacity of nearly about 200 bulls all combined up so it does give us quite a few production stalls and all of those bulls can be uh, sorted uh, making sex female semen on the uh, on the dairy side and now uh, onto the beef side making sex male side for that beef on dairy combination that we're working to from the female side um, our facilities are uh, over the years have grown We've, we've purchased many females in public auctions. Um, to date, uh, an exact number isn't maybe the necessary thing, but we're trying to grow and trying to create the next generation of, of high-end males for our program internally, trying to have something um, not necessarily completely unique, but more uh, dif differentiated within the industry for our sales teams. Um, so it's very unique for us to try to make many males from some bulls that would only come out in, in uh, sex female product and we would make males then for that next generation. We would utilize genetics from all around the world, not just from sexing technologies, but uh, the best bulls um, and whether those bulls are in conventional or sex female as well to make as many females. The other side of it that's um, maybe unique to, to, uh, to sexing technologies is we work very hard in two breeds, not just Holstein or Red Holsteins as well, but also in the Jersey side. So we are always trying to create uh, the, the sires that can be marketed um, through, uh, through ST Genetics as well. Okay. Deciding on the sires, generally I, th I think it's, a, it's, it's easy to just um, get, into, get into the mode of getting your Excel spreadsheet out, sorting, moving bulls, and what bulls what bulls should I be using to think in advance? What bulls am I trying to meet a marketing target in the next five years? What's, what are people going to want in the next five years? Is it, is it simply I want high milk and high DPR and A2A2? Is it I want extreme type? Is it I want a, a balance of type and production? Um, one, of the things that, one of the things that's learned very quickly is we don't, as in an AI company, and I, I say this as sexing technologies, we don't, we don't determine the market. The market determines itself. And I think it's very correct for us to make sure that we have many bulls that can fit different market segments as opposed to us saying, here's a bull and now it fits everybody. Um, one size doesn't fit all. And our markets are continuing to ebb and flow. And I think it's very easy to maybe draw a big circle and say that the majority of people want an effective commercial dairy bull that's a medium size, high fertility, high production, um, make, make me lots of that. That's a nice easy one to find, but within there, maybe there's a little bit more protein emphasis or some more A2A2 or some more DPR or more polled. So I think each, everything is always ebbing and flowing. And so from a, how do you determine what bulls to use? I think it's really a, a smart play to say, where is it going to be in five years? Because that's those are the kind of bulls that we need to have for the marketplace that's going to want very many different product lines at that point. Very exciting. Um, you, you know, buying buying genetics, um, you know, there's there's no... Good genetics are everywhere. It, it matters. There's, as, as very easily said, borders don't contain genetics. Mountains and rivers and oceans don't contain them. They, they go where, where they're found. Um, genomic testing will will definitely be uh, a huge value point in finding new genetics around the world. This heifer happened to be an, an embryo that, that made the trip down to, to Australia, implanted, made a nice live healthy heifer calf. Uh, she has multiple siblings from the same flush as well, and that opportunity came to purchase her. Um, 
the the idea was to purchase her whether she was in Australia in the U.S. Um, great relationships with the people um, in Australia. So if we if the reason or the the direction was she'd stay there, hey, not a problem. We can figure out how to create some sons from her or some daughters and create and go a little bit. But the idea was always to say, hey, let's try to work her back to the U.S. to where our main production facility is and. You have the people and the staff and the direction and everybody's excited for that, but it, it took a lot of due diligence. Um, I don't know exactly how many emails back and forth between multiple government agencies to confirm and say this is happening and this is moving, but um, this one, um, you know, I guess the old adage, it, it uh, you know, parents are nice to, to grow children, but it takes a whole village to make it happen. This is one of those where it took the, took the whole village to get it done. From, from our friends in Australia, uh, to our friends in Canada, to the U.S. Um, currently, the heifer is residing, residing in Canada. She made, the, she made the long flight from Melbourne to L.A., L.A. to Toronto. Um, she picked up some really cool frequent flyer miles, I'm sure, and stuff like that. She traveled along with uh, four other friends, uh, I say, and uh, uh, a well-taken-care-of uh, facility and stuff like that. So we're very pleased with, with the care of animal husbandry to get her moved over here. Um, she'll finish her, her uh, quarantine isolation in Canada very shortly, and then we'll work to bring her down here. I'd say we're, within, we're probably within about 21 to, to 28 days of bringing her down to the U.S., and her, uh, her spot then will be to show up into forest with the with the rest of the elite genetic heifers that ST's working and and then I guess the best thing to say is get to work then so mm -hmm. to have to have the the opportunity to, to work at multiple other AI companies prior to uh, being involved at Sexing Technologies it's very unique to see those those companies that have built tradition and built the understanding that there is a process and a system that goes in place that is tremendously valued um, you know a cons employees enjoy consistency we enjoy something new all the time at, at, at some point but we enjoy making the same ideas and directions so that everything stays stays in that same realm of this is how we do it and this is what we are at sexing technologies we're 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 learning what we can be we're we're learning we're taking what tradition has shown us to do but we're not not afraid to explore some different avenues or go a different direction and that that is hugely refreshing um, it puts some stresses into uh, certain roles of people at, at uh, in different areas of production to shipping to sales to customer service but all those things are it's refreshing to be able to to make your own roadmap as you're going down the road so is it is it right or wrong is it good or bad we're finding that out as we grow into things and um, it's enjoyable it's there's no one one size fits all there's no one way does it right um, it's exciting to have that opportunity to create your own your own ideas and how to make it work so yeah it's um you know I guess if you could just take it in in decades of time you know a decade ago sex semen wasn't even a wasn't even a, a, a major forethought of many people. So now, uh, you know, within a decade, really 20, 30% of the industry now has made a, a switch from a conventional semen product to a sex semen product. I think that's a huge change. That's a major change. That's, that's why ST is, is now part of the industry in which we are at. So when you think of what's coming next, um, you know, realistically, not that we're looking for that, but I think the industry is starting to accept sex semen in a way, shape, and form now that it's imperative to utilize the best semen available, the best genetics. And if I could make as many good females for my herd, it's without a doubt. But now I think the thing that's really starting to come into it and really help it is the advent of genomic testing. If you can genomic test at 30 days of age, and determine that value within a quartile within your herd A, B, C, or D, and understand that, oh my goodness, here's here's 10 heifers and three of them are really awesome and, and two of them are in the in a lower ranking, you can determine right away, I, I know I really gotta make sure that I that I get calves out of these elite ones, and maybe from these bottom ones, maybe my 
uh, reproductive needs doesn't mean that I need a female heifer from her. Maybe I need a beef calf from her. Maybe I need her uterus to do something else as opposed to thinking of her as a milking production individual. I think that the, the combination of sex semen and genomics are really going to play really going to play a large part. Now from, from to me, I think that's going to be delivered and driven by a commercial dairy force. The commercial dairyman says, I'm going to milk X thousands of cows. I need replacements. I want a certain genetic value point in my herd, but how can I also derive some other value out of the rest of my animals? That, that beef on dairy today to supply that, that, uh, that direction, I think will be huge. I think in addition to just simple beef on dairy, I think dairymen want as much real-time data as they can get. Genomic data is important, but how can, how can that data become part of an everyday direction of animals that stay, animals that get bred a certain way, culling of animals, um, just the selection of how do I keep improving genetically into my herd to make it the most effective herd that I have. So I think the data, the data that they can get genomically, plus the, the advent of them making their calves and, and their processes, I think will be a major portion the next decade. Um, I think there's going to be niche markets that come about. Um, it won't surprise me that more A2A2 doesn't come into play, or pole has a place in it. And I think people will learn, I think people will really learn to become a stronger marketer than they are today. I think it'll be a little bit of a, you've got to learn to market your product. And yes, we market milk, but within milk, what, what is that about? Is it, is it just about volume of production of milk? Is it about a, a high uh, fat content? Is it about a cheese market milk? Is it about a certain milk from an A2A2? Is it something undes undesirable within that or desirable that we're going to find in that? I, I just think I, I see more and more large commercial dairymen understand the value of branding that product. And as they brand it, I think they're gonna learn to market that product even more. So I think those things are coming towards us here. Yeah, um, I, am, I am a product of, of uh, of uh, working at multiple AI companies and each one of them was educational. Each one of them taught me unique things than the others. Um, some were private, some were co-op. Um, so in a, in a sense, um, as I look at what ST is today, I see a very diverse company and it's a, and it's a company, um, it, it's a company that allows anybody to show up. If, you, if you've got something that you think you can bring to, that's valuable to the, to the company, come on in, no question about it. Um, Juan Moreno, Maurice Rosenstein, they, they put an emphasis on just, just show up and do, do the things you can do. Not where you came from, not who you are. It's of irrelevance, that background, but what you do each day here. So I'm very proud of the diversity that we have here from, from uh, the different cultures um, different languages that are spoken within our office every day. Um, me of Northern European ancestry, uh, we tend to tend to have a different viewpoint or tend to think of things differently. And I'm, I'm humbled by those people that come from different backgrounds that can show a different way of doing it. And it's, it's sometimes it's just really refreshing to have that because if you, if you just do the same thing over and over again and not ever think about it or include or allow that opportunity, you just, you just stay on that same even level play. Maybe that's good, but to me, the, the inclusiveness is very valuable. So from a company, I enjoy it. Um, my years of, of being with other AI companies, I always did tours and a lot of that was international. And it's always refreshing for, for tours because they're excited to come, they're excited to visit. And it's no different here at, at Sexing Technologies. Now you have people that are excited to be a part of the team. And it's, yeah, it's, it's great to be all inclusive. Yeah. Show up, work, do your best, and let's all pull the rope together.